Let's take a look at some examples so you can sort of see this nomen name nomenclature, nomenclature, nomenclature in action. Here I've got this wacky function. Check it out. It's crazy. So it goes way up here, then it comes down, it dips, it goes up, it takes a little peak up here, and then it comes down, and then it's asymptotic to this dotted line that maybe you can't even see, but there's an invisible dotted line here, this is asymptotic. Let's see what we can say about the extrema. That's the max and the min. Okay, well, if we just look at this visually, what do I see? I see that, in fact, well, this is tapering off, it's approaching this asymptote, so nothing's happening there. Where are my critical values? Well, here's a critical point right here. The derivative is zero up there, so that's good, that's a critical point. Derivative is zero here, that's a critical point. And so I see that I've got a couple of critical points, and you can look at this picture and see that plainly that's a max and that's a min. So certainly these are examples of local max and local min, but are any of them actually global or absolute? So let's take a look and see what we can figure out here. So what is the absolute maximum of this function? Where does that occur? So I'm looking for the absolute peak. Well, this is a peak. But notice that the function, as we move to the right, gets higher and higher and higher without bound. It turns out that keeps going. That trend continues. So in fact, there is no highest point. No matter where you are, you can get higher, but it's moving closer more to the right. So in fact, absolute maximum, this has none. What is that value? Well, it doesn't make sense. So it's not applicable. What about the absolute minimum? Well, this is a local min at x equals 1. Is it a global min? Well, it sure is, because notice that here, this side is asymptotic to this, this asymptote that's way up here. So this is actually the rock bottom lowest point this function gets. And so there's an absolute min at x equals 1. And what's the absolute minimum value? Well, that's the value of the function there, which we can see to read off is negative 2. So the actual lowest value is negative 2, and it happens when x equals 1. So you can see sometimes we might have an absolute min, but not an absolute max. You can imagine a scenario where we have an absolute max, but no absolute min, and so forth. So that's just some nomenclature. Here, let's have some fun. Just take a look at a really crazy curve. Let's go nuts here. Look at all these things here. So this is a lot of curve. And notice again, there's this invisible asymptotic line here. And the curve approaches it here and here. And what's happening everywhere else? Well, let's find all the critical points. That's places where the derivative doesn't exist or the derivative is 0. Where do we see that? Well, if you go along here, tangent is horizontal. So we have a candidate there. Very, very steep. Comes down. It's 0 here. Tangent is 0 there, has 0 slope. Keep going. Whoop. 0 slope up here. Then we take a spin downward. We level off, so that's 0 slope. We go up, 0 slope. And then we keep coming down, and we get lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, and lower. we post the asymptote. So we have these candidates here. These are our critical points here, x1, x2, x3, x5, x6. And the question is, what are they? Well, this is plainly a minima. So this is a minimum. This is a local minimum. What is this? Well, actually, this is neither a max nor a min. Let's take a second to appreciate the fact that just because the derivative is 0 doesn't mean we have a max or a min. We could have neither. Now, is that really not a max or min? It's kind of hard to see because it looks like it levels off so much. But it turns out that it looks to me like this thing is sort of increasing. And then for that moment, it just is sort of level. And then it starts to keep increasing. So in fact, if you put a drop of water there, it looks like it would tend to sort of want to fall downward a little bit. This is not the highest point because nearby I see, well, this either it's, it's no. If you, if you put water there, you can't see it. But if you magnify it, here, let me magnify it for you. You see, it's actually slightly increasing. And at that moment, it's not increasing at all. So if you put, drop up water there, it's actually going to fall down a little bit. So that is neither a max nor a min. And that can happen. This is plainly a max. It's a local max. Nearby, it's a local max. What is this? That's nothing. That's nothing going on there. What is this? That's a local minimum. Water would settle there. That's a local maximum. All right. So we've got mins at x equals 1 and at x, at, I'm sorry, at x1 and at x5. And we have maxes at x3 and x6. Now, what about 
global. What about extreme values? Well, you can see this is the drop dead lowest point that this function gets. It never gets lower than that because of these asymptotes here. So in fact, this is the global or absolute min. That happens at x1. And that value, whatever that is, would be the actual value, the ex absolute minimum value. Now, what about the, uh, so this min is just a local min, but that's the absolute min. What about these maxes? Well, this one's higher. This is a bigger one. So this is the absolute max. This is the global max at x3. And if we actually could read off that value, that value would be the actual absolute maximum value of the function. This is a max, but it's just a local one. OK, cool. Now, what about if we restrict, we restrict the domain? So we just look, take a look at, for example, x, uh, y equals x squared, so our famous friendly parabola. But let's just look between 0 and 1. You see how I made it red here? Let's just look there. Well, we can see that, well, the derivative is going to be 0 here. So that's a candidate for being a min, which, of course, we know it's a min. But then it's 0 nowhere else. So the only critical point we see is that x equals 0. But if you look just along there for max min, what do we see? We see that, yes, in fact, at x equals 0, we have a min. But what about at x equals 1? When you look at the whole function, nothing's happening there. We just climb right through. But if I truncate, then in fact, that point at x equals 1 is a summit. That's a high point. This is a really important high point, in fact, because it turns out if we have endpoints, endpoints are always extrema. No matter what, if you're going to truncate a function, you're going to truncate at either a max or a min. OK? So in this case, what I see here is that I have a minimum at x equals 0, and that minimum value is 0. And I have a maximum on this interval at x equals 1, and that maximum value is equal to, well, y equals 1. And in fact, since those are the, this is the only min and that's the only max, these are actually extreme. So these are the absolute minima and absolute maxima right there. And in fact, this extreme example is sort of interesting because if we have a nice function that's, that's continuous like this, then on some interval, it should have an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. And it turns out that's always true, not just in this example.